With the governor's order to remove the statue of Robert E. Lee, if you'll pardon the pun, a monumental change will come to the very heart of Richmond and the Commonwealth. What will that change mean for Virginians, both black and white? I'm joined now by Dr. Julian Hader, professor of leadership studies at the University of Richmond for some historical perspective. Professor, welcome. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be here. Good to have you. Well, I don't mean to be glib, but how big a deal will this be? It's, uh, as you stated, a uh, monumental shift uh, in the reimagining of public space in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Well, we hear so much about history that the monuments purport to tell. Is that history, as some say, being erased? Well, it depends. I think, um, on the one hand, this is a watershed moment in, uh, in terms of Confederate statuary and memorialization. Um, but the significance of this moment I think is yet to be determined. Um, it's going to, um, depending on what happens with the monuments, I think if these, if they take these monuments down and put them in a warehouse, it's a squandered opportunity um, to, to deal with the narrative of the lost cause, to deal with the context in which the statues were built, what people intended when they built them, and what they represented over the course of the 20th century. In many ways, it's just the beginning. And so it should be put in a somewhere else, but in a context like a museum grounds or, or, or a private home? Or is, is that what you're suggesting when you say the, the lost opportunity would be to put it somewhere else and have it have some impact, just not on Richmond's grandest boulevard? Right. Well, I think if the if policymakers have determined to take those statues down, if they end up in a warehouse where people can't view them, I think... Um, it's 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 waste. It, it'd be a waste um, to really interrogate the the lost cause and Confederate statuary. In, in many ways, told a story, and um, some people would argue a false narrative. And the only way to deal with that false narrative is to um, interrogate it uh, with with primary sources and, 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 and historical material. And I think it's in, it's imperative that those statues not be removed from from pub. Uh, from the public eye. I think they need to be in a place where people can deal with them and deal with the history so that, it, it, dare I say, we not recreate the mistakes of the past. Well, and, and to that point, what do you see about the impact of the, their removal on various groups, whether black or white, when you consider that you know, Virginia's history is kind of the core of the Commonwealth's identity? Right, well, I think those monuments have always meant uh, two different things to, uh, to African-Americans and their white counterparts. Right. If you go back and you look at the actual primary sources African about how they felt about the emergence of Confederate statuary, uh, particularly individuals like John, Mitch, John Mitchell with the rich and African-American and planet. And then there was a pretty uniform celebration of particularly the Lee Monument and the monuments thereafter from the white community. So they've always been divisive. Um, in Richmond. And Richmond, for a very long time, had a sizable minority population, African-American population, who held those monuments in general disdain. So they, there's never been any real unity around um, uh, Monument Avenue. And what about the argument that some say it will impact commerce, that is tourism, that they're a major tourism draw? That could be, you, you might be able to mitigate that if they're if they're placed in a museum or if they're somewhere else that people can see these monuments, like I mentioned earlier, um, the extent to which it would be a, a financial drain on the city is yet to be determined. And I think it'll be determined by the strategies that policymakers, historians, and the, the, the Richmond community and the Commonwealth come up with to deal with these monuments and where they might go in the future. We just have a few seconds left. Professor, what was your feeling when you heard that the governor ordered Lee's statue removal? When the General Assembly uh, changed to uh, a largely democratic composition, I, I, I recognized, and particularly when they gave local control uh, to, for, or locality to decide what to do with the monuments, that their days were numbered. All right. Professor Julian Hader from the University of Richmond, thank you, sir, for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's send it over to Frank.